All right, I wanted to give my advice on how I think that you can become a better web developer or just a developer in general. In terms of your skills, like this is mainly geared to the people who are like starting off and learning. So if you're here, if you're just starting off, some of the things I would recommend doing to get better is obviously, first of all, you need to pick one language. You need to learn the syntax and understand it and master it pretty well. Now, when I say master, I mean like you should just be able to build stuff. And some of the best ways to progress your skills are just building in general, right? You can't just watch videos of people building stuff. You actually need to apply the things that you're learning and build stuff for yourself. If you go and look at my Web Dev Cody uh, GitHub account, I have 34 repos, but I've actually just created this account like this year. If you go to my other personal account, I think I have over 100 repos. I have a bunch of failed projects in there. I have continuously tried to build things. And along the way, even though I do abandon the projects, I do learn great things from just building. So that is the way that I have learned things. So if you're starting off, I think that's the best thing. Like if you just keep on building stuff, you can progress pretty quick, get up to like an average dev, right? All right, so my number one advice, just build stuff. Um, I, I know this is like a cliche thing, but in all honesty, there's people who I know have just watched tutorials and they've bought courses. And then after they finish watching all the content, they don't know how to build anything for themselves. So build stuff. I mean, like start small, try to build out little games, something that interests you. Try to make a little application to help your kid learn how to rhyme words, right? It can be something very simple. And as a beginner, something like this can be very, very difficult to even grasp your head around how to build this with just JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So I do think the more stuff you build, the faster you will progress in your skill set. But it's not just building stuff, right? At some point, you need to actually start building larger projects. So if I go over here and say, let's just go ahead and say to build larger projects. Now, this would include a multi-page application with multiple pages. Maybe you have a header, you got like drop downs, you got uh, authentication, you got modals. That's what I mean by a larger project, not something that you can do in a day, like a, a stopwatch, not something that you want to have something that took you like literally weeks or months to just keep on adding features onto. I think that is like the next progression, which is going to really move you up um, this, this skill set ladder. And by the way, I am curious if you guys have comments about like what you suggest doing to really progress your skill set, leave a comment so other people can kind of benefit uh, from this as well. Now, unfortunately, you could actually be like pretty much above average in terms of your skills, but you might not have actually worked in a real time job yet. OK, so there are things that you're going to learn when you get hired with collaborating with a team in building on software with multiple contributors. So I think the third thing I would say is try to find find a team, right? Find a buddy that you can just pair with so that you can get real life experience about merge conflicts, collaboration, how to basically plan out a project together how to so that both you and your friend or maybe you have three people or a group of people you can all work on something and figure out ways to plan the project without stepping on each other's toes but also maybe one person can start like defining interfaces and you're going to code to try to meet with that interface so stuff like that i mean find a team work with the team um collaborate that's something that i wish i did when i was learning how to code um i think collaboration is something that really helps you learn more usually what happens is that like you'll just be like a lone wolf developer you'll just do things the way that you think you should do it. And then you'll watch a guy on YouTube who does something completely different that blows your mind. And you kind of wish that you had that at the start, right? You wish you had someone with experience who has shown you a better way to do stuff. So find a team, collaborate with people, or even just find a mentor, like watch someone on YouTube who actually shows you like building stuff. Now, fortunately on YouTube, there's tons of people who are actually showing you how to build things. Um, but the downside is that many people on YouTube, when they walk you through this tutorial they're like everything's pre-planned it's not live so you don't really get that like thought process and problem solving skills on the fly you actually just get to watch them walk you through them building something that they've already built and i'll be honest i've done that a lot of times in my tutorials where i'll have another monitor up to my side that has all the code already ready to go and i'm making this tutorial and i'm just like looking at the code just typing line by line explaining what's going on that personally isn't a great way to teach and that's why i kind of moved away from it so most of my videos, I just do live instructions. I show you stuff live. I try to so solve stuff live, which can be a little bit uh, all over the place at times, but I do think it's the best way um, to learn if you aren't just like by yourself doing stuff. So once you've basically built stuff, you built a lot of small little projects, maybe you built little games, then you built like a larger project. You start learning more about these different toolings and libraries like React or Next. 
uh, Shad CN, Tailwind, and stuff like that. Again, I will say that once you get a job, like all this stuff is like going to be taken care of because obviously you're going to be doing all this at your job. This whole talk is geared more towards people who don't don't work in the industry. They haven't had a chance to get hired yet. So the fourth thing I'd recommend doing to really get good is just expose yourself to as much as you can. So what do I mean by that? I mean, read as many blog posts as you can from experienced developers who have been in the industry. Try to understand what they're talking about. Watch people on YouTube who kind of give their experiences and thoughts on various things and challenge their opinions and try to make your own opinions and say, you know what, I don't think this person's right. I'd rather do it like this. Try to find talks, right? There's conference talks about coding that's been hosted on YouTube. Watching those conference talks are really, really great ways to like really push you over that average developer. And if you're over there watching a bunch of conference talks, like you're just going to slowly get pushed over to the more exceptional side of, of the spectrum. And that's something that I wish I did more of. I wish I watched more talks and maybe attended more conferences. But a lot of the times I just don't care. I just, I'm happy with just being mediocre. I'm happy with like being around I would, if I had the place myself, I'd say I'm like over here somewhere, to be honest. I've seen people online who are like obviously over here and they're super smart. And I've met people at college who I know are like super, super smart. You show them a problem within like one second, it just clicks, they understand it. So I know I'm probably like over here. But the idea is the more you learn, the faster it is to learn more things. So as an example, I started with AngularJS, right? I started learning about building out web applications. I learned about state in AngularJS. But once you've learned all that stuff, when you move over to something like React, you realize, oh, React has state management as well. I've already learned that. React had this idea of like life cycles. I already learned that in AngularJS. And then you move from React to Vue or Svelte, and it's all literally the same thing. Um, same with backend libraries and frameworks, right? Once you understand like a REST API, you understand authentication, you understand a database, you understand how to connect to a database using like a no RM, or if you want to write raw SQL, because you're a masochist, you start realizing that like once you've learned the fundamentals of something, it's very easy to just keep on learning more stuff. Um, and then as you start exposing yourself to more and more things, that's one reason why I like to do a bunch of different um, sponsor videos on my channel is because it forces me to get exposed to new services that might help me think outside the box a little bit and also get paid for learning their services and promoting them on my channel. I know people hate sponsored videos, but honestly, it's a great way for me personally to get paid to learn something. Um, and it's also a great way for you all to get exposed to new things as well. Now, step five, I would say is also pretty important, and that is to teach others. Okay, at some point when you feel like you are smart enough and you feel like you've learned something, uh, or even if you're currently trying to learn like and again like let's say you're back here if along this process you're teaching people you're going to move at a much faster pace because from what i've learned myself the ability to teach others really just slingshots your own knowledge because in order to teach you have to find ways to break down difficult concepts to be able to explain to someone who who knows less than you okay and I've, I have like over 700 or something videos on my channel and i feel like i'm getting better and better at better at teaching people concepts because I have to take things that I've learned and just like break them down into smaller chunks to really help um, with aspect number five. So again, like teach others, you can make your own blog, you can do like medium posts now, or you can just do a journal, just like write and pretend like you're writing to someone, uh, you know, in a journal so you can kind of like solidify what you've learned and just get good at kind of explaining those technical concepts in writing. Let's see if I can think of one more just to tack on for you all. Um, I think the next one, and this is more like doing some self-reflection, is I've been in the industry for like 10 years now. And at some point you start to get stagnant, I think. Like you'll just stay at the same company because, you know, you like the people that you work with or, you know, you, it, it pays the bills, right? You're comfortable. But at some point you need to get out of your comfort zone. Get out of comfort zone. Um, and I think this is kind of like aligning with number four, expose yourself to as much as you can. But number six is more of like get out your comfort zone means try to apply for new positions, try to elevate yourself, try to tackle harder things so that you really put that stress back on you. Because when you've been working in the industry for a while, you just start getting to the routine of things. You're like, oh, I'll go into work at a certain time. I'll sip my coffee. I'll work on my bugs. Um, I'll submit them and I'll check out. But during that whole process, during your day, especially like at work, if you can try to find different things that you can volunteer in or you can try to lead an effort in like refactoring this subsystem of part of your larger system, I think these are like 
great aspects of like more advanced engineers. I think number six is something that you just have to keep on applying to yourself at a certain point because because I think there's people who stay in the industry who've been in the industry for a while and they just don't want to get out of their comfort zone. They're happy with, you know, their language that they're using. They're happy with the framework that they're using. They're happy with the way things are done. And I think the, the better engineers will always try to challenge the status quo. They'll challenge the way we do things and try to think about better ways to maybe do this, right? And the idea is that we always try to make higher quality code at a faster pace while also becoming um, more collaborative. There's, there's tons of metrics that we're trying to shoot for. We're trying to improve developer experience. We're trying to in improve performance of systems. Like there's all these things that you can always be on the lookout for. And I think often you have to like get out of your comfort zone and try to lead those efforts. So number six, a good example of number six, I know I'm kind of harping on this for a while, but let's say you're a junior engineer and like you think that you're here, but in reality, like you're actually here. Sometimes you just want to go and apply for that senior engineer position. Maybe you'll go into the interview and you'll actually know a lot more than all the other candidates who have been applying for that position. So try to just, you know, push yourself, see how far you can make it. Um, maybe, for example, you're already over here and you need to try to get into a higher position as like an architect or like a tech lead. Just try it. The worst that happens is you fail and they're not going to probably fire you. They're probably just going to say, you know what, maybe you're not a good tech lead. Maybe you should just go back to being a normal engineer and we'll find someone else to kind of take your position, assuming that you're at a good company. Or you just realize that after a couple of months, you're like, you know what, this just isn't for me. This isn't the role that I really want to do. Although this is like a higher up the ladder leadership position and I did get out of my comfort zone, I realized that me as a person, I just don't want to do it. So you can always just say, you know what, and even stepping back into a previous role, like you're still moving up because you've just learned great things about yourself, what you do like, what you don't like. And now you can focus in on the things that you think really matters. So here you have it, the video that you all didn't ask for, but I decided to record it anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this. If you did, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And like always, I have a Discord channel and you guys are welcome to join. If you want to find a place to kind of hang out with some other developers and ask questions along the way, if you're ever trying to learn something. Because again, number three, be sure to collaborate, find people to work with, find people who are smarter than you, that you can ask questions who aren't mean, and uh, they'll really just elevate your knowledge. Have a good day and happy coding.